You probably already heard this by now. What is ChatGPT or the new thing from OpenAI created by, I don't know, Elon Musk? So why should you watch another video about the same topic? Let me introduce myself. I'm Nikolai. I'm just a regular software developer or a software engineer out there. I do daily coding, stand-up meetings, all the things that are related to software development or software engineering in general. And as most developers, and probably also you who are watching, I would like to speed up my code. You know, as developers, we tend to have a lot of things to do. We have a tough work environment and we need to get things done. And then you can ask, why do you want to speed up your code process? Well, you have seven and a half hours every single day. Some of it are devoted to actually doing the programming and most of the time are used on meetings, talking to people and getting to know things and understand the systems, architecture and so on. And it's nothing bad about getting things done. It's just the moral, the outcome that you want to have. Is it because you want to move up the ranks and become a better software developer, earn more salary? That's topics I don't cover on this channel at all. But if you just want to deliver good software and make your clients happy, then it's important to, to get things done and get it correctly. So why not just get a little bit help from Copilot or from OpenAI or AI in general to, to deliver software faster. Let me give you an example. So if you take a look at the screen, here we have a chat GPT and you just go to openai.com, check the link in the description. You go a little bit down and then you can click on try chat GPT, this button right here. And then you have to log in. Let me show you how that works. You can just log in with, for example, Google. I will do that. As you can see, it's a free research preview. Probably they're going to charge money for using this service. So use it while you can. So this is chat GPT, which everybody is talking about now. We can start by saying hello. And as you can see, it says hello. How can I help you today? Is there something specific you would like to know or discuss? And it can provide information on a wide range of topics. So let's try it out. Could you help me create a C sharp application? And as you can see, it goes through the steps. Creating a C sharp application involves several steps, but I can provide a high level overview of the process to get you started. Here are the general steps you need to follow install development environment, set up a new project, write your code. So as you can see, it goes ahead and gives us uh, kind of like a default information that we could get if we also Google this. Once it gets interesting is when we actually have some questions about code that we want to get answers about. So let's try that out next. So here we have Rider and we're going to create a web API using ASP.NET Core web application. We're going to use web API just like that with no authentication and SDK is fine with 6.0. You can also use 7. And then we're going to use example app just like that. And we have it in the directory of YouTube. It's totally fine. Click on create. So now that we have something to work with, we can see that we have an update for GitHub Copilot. And as you're watching this video about AI, why not give it an update? I'm using the nightly so I can get all the newest information or the newest uh, code. So here we have it. Let's take a look. We have a program CS file with some stuff and we do have a weather forecast. I'm guessing controller as well because this is the example app. Let's just get rid of all of this and also the model. And let's just create a model folder here for models. And in our controller, we're going to ask OpenAI to help us. Hi, I have set it up. Let's see if we can spot my mistake in spelling. Set it up um, .NET 6 core API project. <laughs> it sounds like you're making progress on your C-sharp project. .NET 6 is the latest version of the .NET framework. Actually, .NET 7 is the latest, but I'm not sure if it's fully supported or if it's out as the complete version yet. So don't take me on that. Cool. So I'm just talking to it like it's my friend. Now I would like to say that I have actually set it up a controller folder and a models 
folder. Do you have any ideas about what we should make? I'm trying to show off the cool capabilities we have by using AI to help us build our app. Okay, so now it thinks that I'm actually talking about AI in general. And you can see we have an error here. So it's uh, it's still a work in progress, but it's getting there. And let's just make it a little bit more specific to our needs. And we want the best practices that there is. Let's see if we can take it to the test. So I'm thinking now we could have something called a booking controller or rider project. And let's just do add class, call it booking controller just like that. Now probably GitHub Copilot is going to help us along the way, but we don't need GitHub Copilot's help. So we're just going to turn it off for now. So that's the way you do it. Go down here and click disable. Right, so we do have our booking controller and I'm just wondering if it can help us set up the bare bones that we need. I have created a booking controller. Could you help me with some starting code to get things going. And if this happens, too many requests, please slow down. What you have to do is actually just refresh and do it again. So I'm creating because it doesn't keep the state that we had. So I'm just going to say I'm creating a C sharp web API. It's great. Cool, cool. And now we are going to say I've created a booking controller. Could you help me with some starting code to get things going? So let's just do it now. See if the request is working. Sure, here is some sample code that you can use as a starting point for your booking controller in C-sharp. Let's take a look at it. Pretty nice, it adds the route here. API controller is correct. Controller base is good because we, we don't need to use controller. We can just use controller base because we don't need all the stuff when we're using an API instead of just views. So it also added that correctly. <laughs> you can see it actually goes ahead and delivers the things that we need. We have booking one, booking two. I mean, this is quite example-ish right now. And here it returns booking plus ID and the post hasn't been implemented yet, but it's a good starting point. So let's just copy all this code and see what it tells us to, to do. This code defines a booking controller class with a few different actions for handling different types of HTTP requests. The route API controller attribute specifies the base URL for the controller's actions and the API controller attribute enables some helpful features for building APIs in ASP.NET Core. So the API controller attribute enables some helpful features for building APIs in ASP.NET Core. We could go ahead and ask could you give more information about the API controller? We will leave that for now. You can add your own code to these actions to implement the desired behavior for API. <laughs> I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any other questions. That's pretty cool. Uh, it gave us all this code and what we can do is actually just copy all of it instead. And let's make sure we actually have the class brackets. Let's just add it here. So let's see what happens. We need to implement the route. So let's do Microsoft ASP.NET Core MVC route attribute. And here we go. That's it. So here's a great starting point for our application. Cool. So as you can see, it goes ahead and helps us with the code. And right now it's a bit boilerplate-ish. So let's see if we can dive in and make it a bit more advanced. All right, so now I actually would like to ask it to help us with the model. So could you also create a good model for booking model? Sure, here's the sample booking model class that you can use as a starting point. It gives the correct properties. It have an ID, customer name, date, time. I agree with customer name. You could just say name, but then you would not know if it was the name of the booking or the customer. So that's good. And number of guests. So as you can see, the class defines a simple model for a booking with properties for the booking's ID, as we talked about customer name, date and time. And it goes ahead and shows us actually how we can use it in the same code. That's pretty amazing, actually, to be honest. You can add any additional properties that you need for your application. To use this model in your booking controller, you can add it as a parameter to the actions that accept or return bookings. So when I'm working with this now, I see this as a great thing to actually learn to code as well. When you have questions, you can just go in and you can ask the chat OpenAI to help you. 
So it shows us that we can use the booking model just like this. So let's implement it. So I'm copying the code here like that. And I'm going to, I like that it actually says copy code as well because it really knows that it's code we're working with. So we could say booking model just like that. And I'm going to remove this public class and just get rid of it and add the booking model that we got from the OpenAI. So here you can see booking model, ID, customer name, date, time, number of guests. And now we can go back to our booking controller and actually see how to use it. And we can see that by going down here, we can do return new booking model and we have to add the action result as a booking model. So let's just modify our get API booking ID thing with this code instead and then do it like that. So get API booking five. Now we can actually get rid of it and paste it in. And here you can see it says booking model. We just have to import it. That's fine. You can see HTTP get ID action result booking model ID customer name John Doe. You can see no errors. Everything is working and all these things will be really similar. But what I would like to do now is to, to ask about best practices. Could you give an example of a best practice? I mean, for example, service layer and so on. Let's see if it helps us with that as well. Sure, one best practice for building web APIs is to use a service layer to abstract the details of data access and business logic from the API controllers. So as you can see, as a programmer, I know kind of the best practices already, but it's pretty interesting to see the way it knows what I'm talking about. And it knows that it's best practice and it gives an example now on the code that we have. That's the important thing. It could be that it would just give us the code on just a general example, but actually it it fulfills the needs that we have in order to build the app that we're trying to build or the API. That's pretty cool. Don't you agree? So you can see it says here's an example of how we could use a service layer in your booking controller. So let's just do that now. This is exactly what we want a booking service. We want to implement it like that in the constructor. I'm just wondering where it's going to tell me that I actually need to hook it up in the file, the starting file. So I wanted to end it at that uh, because as you can see, it's getting more and more advanced, but now we can see the bare bone of what we can actually get from using AI to help us build our project. If you want, you can check out the part two where I'm going into implementing the interface, the repositories, uh, as well as the service layer as well. So what do you think about this uh, OpenAI thing? Let me know in the comment section down below. I think it's great. It will definitely help us be become actually better developers in my opinion, because you can see it's trained on a lot of data and it actually knows more than some of the best developers out there. So use that with a grain of salt, but when you take it a bit more to the test and uh, you see where it needs to go, then I'm sure that with more training and more time on it, it will be a really good development asset to have in your toolbox, just to have it with you. Some of this actually astonished me the way it actually could deliver and show us the way the project folder and structure would also be. So have a great day and see you next time.